Hello and welcome back to Parenting SOS. Not a day goes by in my house where the conversations don't lean towards we and poo. It's the joys of living with kids. We talk about it a lot and I think that fascination might have come from us and the endless nappy changes we've done over the years. There's endless commentary about what is in the nappy. Uh, but that conversation really ramps up when you start taking on the huge milestone that is potty training. Quite weirdly, potty training is one of those topics that everyone has an opinion on. Uh, and today I'm joined by Amanda Jenner. Amanda is recognised Amanda is recognised as the UK's toilet training expert, a role that often takes her around the country offering advice and support to parents and carers. Hi Amanda. Hello. Thank you How for having you? me today. I'm good. All good. Thank you. Really good. Good, good, good. I mean, it's a huge huge topic and one that is that I always I've always found it really baffling that everyone has an opinion on it you know oh well, aren't they potty trained yet oh you should really start you know I I when I was pregnant uh, and I think I'd just had a newborn and someone got in touch about the fact that they had done a specific type of um training that was ha sort of hanging their baby over the toilet when recognizing signs in that way and you know so I think straight away I was like oh this is a topic that's gonna uh be one to watch definitely <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's very competitive. I mean, parenting is, isn't it? But yeah. toilet training, definitely. It's one of those things where people all have an opinion or, oh, I can't believe your little one's still in nappies at three or, you know, oh, don't you think you should start potty training? We get, you know, so many parents get really stressed out about yeah. other people's opinions and then they feel they're doing the wrong thing. But actually... It's not the case. You know your child better than anyone else. So it's just, I'm a great believer of going with your gut. You know, we're going to those signs and stuff. But yeah, definitely. It is one of those things where it's very opinion based. And yeah. some other parents do look down on people when they, you know, their kids three and they're still in nappies. But it's absolutely fine. It's just when they're ready. Yeah. I mean, of all the things, though, to be judgmental over. You know, wait until know. their kid's a teenager and they've done something yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always say to them, this is just the start, you know, just <laughs> calm down. It's Everyone has to go for a poo and a wee. It doesn't matter. They will do it. They're not going to university in nappies. We're fine. Yeah. So just chill out. They just need to chill out. But it is, I mean, there's so many things that I've done in the past where, you know, parents are like arguing about it. It's like, it's like proper. Really? You know, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's oh, that well, stress child. and stuff that just doesn't help you when you're going into it no it doesn't and the pressure I mean parenting's pressurized anyway isn't it mm. like, like they didn't come with a manual when you have a kid so I think that we're, but we're potty training I would say I've got three kids 26 down to 15 and I would say that potty training was the most stressful thing because you know they're so used to going in a nappy and then yeah. all of a sudden they've got to sit on this plastic thing and go for a poo and a wee and it's really hard it's really hard and it's hard on all the family not yeah. just the little one because it does turn the household upside down a little bit but you know it's it's doable it's fine so so you what led you out. what led you into like becoming the UK's you know leading toilet training expert what how did you take that path my son George, you know, this is going to be my wedding speech. So when he was, uh, he's he's turned twenty six this week. So when uh, we were out and about, you know, the wrong thing this is, by the way, you do got to, you have got to go out. You got to learn, this yeah, is the wrong, yeah. wrong thing that I did. So I've just had a newborn. You don't potty train. We've just had a newborn, but I didn't know I was young. Yeah. Um, George was two, and Holly was just two weeks old. I was breastfeeding, and all of, all of it was going on. Um, and I thought I've got to get out and go out with the kids. Took me five hours to get out the door, got out the door. He wanted to take this massive Thomas the Tank Engine potty with him. And I'm like, where am I going to put that in a double push chair with all sorts going on? You know what it's like. Um, but I did. I took it yeah. in a carrier bag. He want, Of course, he wanted a wee as soon as we got out into the high street. So I plonked him on there because you can't tell a two-year-old to hold on when you're potty mm -hmm. training. Um, and he went for a wee. I had nowhere to put it, so I just tipped it down a, a drain. And this guy came up to me and he went, what a disgrace, what have you just done? And I've got a two-year-old crying his eyes out because this man shouting at me. I've got 
milk coming out everywhere because I was breastfeeding. She was screaming, and I just stood there. I was like, "Oh my god, what?" And I started crying. Um, and I did. I went home, and I thought, "There's got to be something out there better than this." And then my carry potty was born. I thought, "I want a potty with a lid," yeah. and I've got to help parents. This is awful. This is an awful situation that I don't think we should be going through for a simple life thing that we have to do with kids. Um, and it it just went from there. I invented my carry potty, and then people started asking me questions. I started going into nursery schools, and I'm thinking, right, okay, every child's different. Let's see how we can make this better. And then Potty Training Academy was born. Um, I train nurseries. You know, I've potty trained so many children, like I can't even tell you, all over the world, Dubai, London. Yeah. Um, Australia, America, um, and it just, I don't know. I mean, when I left school, I didn't think, you know, I'm going to be a poo and wee queen or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, what an ambition, Amanda. <laughs> I know, I mean, come on. But, I mean, I'd love to meet my head teacher now. But, um, but yeah, I think, it, and it just sort of went from there, and I just, I, I just love helping families, and I think I love kids. I'm a very family oriented person. Obviously, like, you're Italian, I'm Maltese, so it's, mm-hmm. like, we're very family and... <laughs> And I think I just love helping families and I wanted to solve that problem. And and I thought it's something that parents shouldn't have to feel really bad about doing out and about either. So and, and that's where it's evolved and gone on from there. And yeah. write write books and everything about it now. It's amazing. It's incredible. On this podcast, we ask you what your three most questions are, and you've sent them in. Uh, so I'm gonna ask them to you. Uh, uh when is the best time to start potty training? Yeah, that's a big one. So when your child is ready, not when your mother tells you, your mother-in-law tells you, it's when your child is ready. So key signs are hiding, you know, when they're doing a poo or a wee, um, you know, swaying side to side. um, And then if they've done something in their nappy, they want it changed. Some kids actually like to sit in it, but when they want it changed, because... This is a sign that they're actually starting to recognise their bodily functions, which is really important. Um, And they're really, really good key signs. And when they're showing those key signs, it's so important that you start, even if you're not about to start, start saying, are you doing a wee? Are you doing a poo? So they're actually sort of relating to what they're doing. That's, That's really important. But they're really good signs. You know, some children don't speak till later on or non-verbal children is different. But I would say it's really good when they can at least communicate with you because, you know, they're not going to be able to tell you if they haven't started speaking that they need a wee or a poo. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really important as well. But they're, they're really good signs that, you know, they're ready. And you'll know as a parent, you're thinking, right, they're starting to get a bit tetchy about having a nappy on or they're stopping or they're hiding because they can feel what's going on. This is a good time to start educating them ready for when you start. So that's a, they're, they're very good key signs. OK, um, your next question is how do you keep your little one on the potty? Yeah, so that's that's a big one as well because what you'll get is at the beginning of potty training they sit on it and they get up and they go yeah and it's like there's <laughs> nothing in there, you know. Um, so they're really clever. So I love to um, do a distraction box. It doesn't have to be expensive. Make a box yourself. Um, get an old shoe box, decorate it with them, and then put in bubbles are really good when you're potty training. But don't get the little ones. Let's go for the big ones. Because if you get them on the potty, they normally jump off seconds later because they're bored already. But if you want to keep them on, let them blow bubbles because it relaxes everything in their tummy, so their bowel and their bladder. Um, And when they're blowing, you know, it's like when you give birth and they say, pant, pant, you're like, I don't want to pant, why am I panting? But that's because we tense up and, you know, if we're tense, we're not going to be able to let it all come out. So bubbles are fantastic. So make a box with them, get them involved. It's really important. Put a squidgem in, a fidget toy, and just say, come on, sit down. Let's blow some bubbles for mummy or daddy. Go on, blow a big bubble. Or um, let's press all the buttons on here. Or And just, just try, even if they sit on it for a couple of minutes and they get up, it's good because some children hate sitting on them. So let's right. let's make it a bit of fun, you know, let's make it a bit interesting. But keep that box somewhere else. It's not to be played with every day. It's just for when they sit on the potty. But it really does work. Uh, and the next question is, how do you encourage your little one to use the potty? So definitely rewards, you know. 
you know, some people don't like rewarding, but I'm a great believer of rewarding your children and praising them for what they do. This is a huge milestone. So if they can see that they've got that goal to, to achieve it, they will do it. So my, my little reward system that I use with my little ones when I potty train them is I wrap up, I leave a little fairy door. So the night before they start potty training, you can make that as well. You don't have to buy it, get, get your crafts out. Um, a little fairy door and we leave the nappies there the night before we're going to start. And then the next day, there's a little letter from the fairies, a little bit of icing sugar all over the carpet. And they've left some little presents with a poo and a wee emoji on the front of them, which I send all my... They can just email me and I'll send them all some. Um, and basically, they wrap them up the next day and the poo and wee fairy have left them for them. And you say to them, if you do a wee wee, you can have this little present. If you do a poo, you can have that little present. So visually, they can see it. Rather than you just saying... Right, if you do all your wheeze and poos in your potty today, um, tomorrow we're going to take you to a shop and buy you some sweeties. To them, that's like 10 years away in their little yeah. life. So if they can visually see those prizes in front of them and you can keep prompting them throughout the day, oh, are we going to get a wee prize? Are we going to get a poo prize? They love it. It really encourages them to use the potty. And is that first introduction to the potty really important as well in, in terms of how they well how their relationship with it is set up I guess you know it, seeing it as a, a fun relaxing spot to be rather than something that your parents are really stressed about you doing yeah definitely I mean because some children can get really stressed with it and it can make them a little bit naughty while you're potty training so be aware of that but this is just because it's it's quite a lot for them to take on yeah. so if you make it fun and children visually respond to stuff um you know yes they love cuddles and we all love cuddling them and stuff and saying well done and use some great you know positive language with them but if they've got something visually they can see it makes them want to do it more and yes mm. You've got to get them involved. Let them choose their own potty as well. You know, don't just plonk them with a plastic potty in front of them and say, right, sit on that. You know, get them involved from the offset because it's them that's doing it. Yes, yeah. we're training them, but, you know, they love picking their pyjamas, don't they, and their big boy and big girl pants and stuff. So get let them pick their potty. You can do it on any Amazon, any online store, or take them into a store. But it's really important that you involve them because it makes them want to bond with it. I know it sounds strange, but it does work. We actually have uh, some questions uh, from the Have Mum, Have Baby community about potty training. Um, uh, so I'm going to put uh, some of those to you. Uh, one person has asked, is there, an age, is there an age where your little one should be potty trained by? Now, obviously, really by the time they start school, um, you know, because we've had recent statistics saying that there's a lot of children not potty trained and going into school in nappies for one reason or another. But I think, you know, you need to get them trained for when they start reception, you know, if they're able-bodied and they haven't got anything going on. Because what happens is, you know, that, then that becomes a bit of a problem. And, you know, little children don't mean to be, but, you know, if they think that a child's having accidents in class, bullying starts, and it will really make that child feel bad about themselves. So I would say, you know, the biggest mistake, and this is not a criticism to any parents, but I think a lot of parents think, right, OK, my child's starting school in September, I'm going to start potty training in July. That's not enough time. You've got yeah. to give yourself some time here um, because all sorts can go on. They can get poorly, you know, they might not want to do it. They might find pooing difficult. So I think that just give yourself some time. But, yeah, I would love to see more children properly potty trained um, by the time they start reception. You know, some children can take a week. Some children can take six months. So give yourself some time, but really start in school, definitely. And uh, someone actually asked uh, another question about um, the time, like how much time should you give to potty training? Is, it, is there a good time to do it? Like say it's the summer and you know that people, that babies, children are going to be wearing less clothes or uh, is there a week where you may be at home more and that, therefore that's easier? Um, what, what's, what's the best way? Yeah, so potty training is all year round, okay? So if your little one's ready in January, you can't say, oh, I'm going to wait till July. Yeah. Because you'll miss that, then you can miss the boat as well with this. So, you know, it's quite tricky, really. You've got to get it all right. So basically, I would say um, there's no set time when you should do it. When they're ready, start, okay? 
But um, it, it can, like I say, every child reacts differently to potty training. It could take a week. It could take, like I say, six months. Um, but if you've started potty training, if you think, right, I've got next week off, it does help. The only reason I'm saying it, I'm not saying stay in because I don't believe that. OK, the yeah. first day, yes maybe, um, just so they can understand the reward system, they know where the potty is. Um, but after that, venture out for little short bursts of journeys. And the reason it's good when you're home, because if you're doing it a certain way, and then they go to nursery the next day, there can be mixed messaging. And mm. that can actually make potty training regress. So, but always speak to your nursery and say, look, you know, we're doing this reward system at home. I know you don't want us to bring presents in because of other kids, but can I give you some pee, poo and wee emojis in a little bag and they can bring them home to us? Um, so I would say it is nice to have at least a few days with them one-to-one -one as parents when you potty train. Um, so, but I'm not saying you need to do that to stay in. It's just so they find their feet and you find their feet because, you know, you'll find that, they might want to poo on the toilet and they might want to wee in the potty or they go off hiding. So you start learning their tricks because they can be really sneaky when they do this. So, yeah, there's no set time, but just it can be any time of the year. It's the, the thing about summer, it was wait till the summer. Yes, like you said, wearing less clothes, um, but it's not realistic. There's yeah. children. I've got so many children that are starting in January and they're ready. So you've got to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's interesting. Um, my little one has a language delay. You um, should I wait to start? So, no, because you can use visual aids, so flashcards, potty training flashcards. Um, and um, I use these with children. You know, I've, I've taught children that have Down syndrome, nonverbal, autism, and they can potty train. Yes, it does take a little bit longer. Um, but if they're nonverbal, the best way to do it is to get these visual aids. They've got a lovely picture on, and then on the back they explain um, what they have to do. But place these visual aids above the potty, uh, one above where you wash your hands, or one above the toilet, and then do the others with them, like nappy or big pants. It's got all lovely cards in there. Um, and do this with them daily so they visually see what they've got to do. And then um, there's a wee and poo emoji in the, this pack, and they can hand hold up the wheel, they can hold up the poo when they need the poo. So it can be done. It takes a little bit more patience, but mm -hmm. I'm a great believer, like, if you keep going, crack on. If you think they're showing signs, even if they're yeah. non-verbal and they're showing signs, go with it. But use some visual aids, you'll need them, definitely. Um, someone has written in saying, my daughter was potty trained but has gone back to nappy since her sister was born. Is this regression normal? Yes, because she wants to be like a baby. Yeah. So mummy's there, you know, they're changing nappy and she wants to be baby. She's like, yeah. hang on a minute, this is great. She's getting all the attention. So I'm just going to go back to nappies again. It's very normal. So because you've just had a baby, just wait for a few weeks. Let baby settle in, you settle in. because a lot for you to take on trying to have baby and uh, potty train and then start a fresh system again in you know a couple of months time when you're settled um set up a new reward system and then hide the nappies because what they do is they know where their nappies are and they will go and give them to you or they go and put them on i've had so many children that do this and then get her helping with the baby so changing the nappy um and showing her this is what babies do so you're helping mummy because you're a big girl so just right. make her feel important but it is regression yeah it's normal once you've you've decided to start potty training uh, and toilet training, should you is it is it difficult if or is it mixed messaging if you then go back into nappies and try to get them back out of it? Once you're out, should you try and stay out? Yeah, there's so there's a certain period. So if you've been doing it for a couple of weeks and you're having the odd accident, great. But if you've been doing it for a couple of weeks and there's everyone's an accident for two weeks, they're not ready. So yeah. stop, put the brakes on and start again in a couple of months. But keep the education going, the books and the cards and apps or whatever. Um, but definitely, I wouldn't, like some parents say, like, you know, I, I've been doing it for four weeks. She's screaming, she's not eating, she's getting up in the night. Well, she's not ready. It's stressing her out. Stop. Um, but, but I think that... A lot of parents think that the biggest thing I would say is that can give very big mixed messaging is they really do, I'm a great believer of going to big girl, big boy pants, because 
if you start pull ups are fantastic mm. if you need to use them for journeys and and night time that's a different story but the mixed messaging comes where you're moving from a nappy to a pull up because they still feel the same they don't right. know the difference it's the same material so they're thinking oh yeah it doesn't matter if i go in here i'm wearing a nappy so my biggest thing is Get potty training pants that are cloth, um, that are reusable because they're great. They save you money. It saves you money anyway, but you do need to go to big girl, big boy pants. That's probably the biggest mixed messaging that I get across the board with all my parents. Like, we're using pull-ups and we're not getting anywhere. Take them off. Let them feel that they've wet themselves. They need to, to realise what they're doing. Yeah. Um, interestingly, um We've got uh, one person talking about nighttime. Uh, my little one says no to nappies at night, but has never had a dry night. And he gets upset when she then has to wake him up to change the sheets and find, then he finds out that he's wet. What what can you do? Because night times for me, it's always been that thing. That's always been a long time after they're out of their daytime nappies. Which is right, yeah. That's the right way to wait a long time. People think, right, we're done in the day, let's go and start nighttime. No, because they're not ready. You know, they're exercising their bladder and they're learning and it gets stronger throughout the, you know, months on after potty training. But nighttime's tricky. But the biggest thing, when I do when I speak to so many parents, and I, I say, right, okay, tell me your typical day and what your child drinks, what your child eats, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, yeah, they have a bottle before they go to bed. They have a massive beaker before they go to bed, grapes, strawberries. And I'm like, God, I don't even think I could keep the bed dry at <laughs> night if I had all that. So they're little bladder like that. So you've got to cut that down. Um, so definitely an hour before bedtime. Another thing we all do, and I did it as well, like, come on, hurry up and do a wee before bed. Hurry up, come on, brush your teeth, hurry up. Because you just want them in bed because you're knackered. And it's mm. fair enough. But we can't do that when we're trying to keep them dry at night. Because what they do is they sit down, do some of it, go to sleep and do the rest of it in their sleep. So we need to that, get them to empty their bladder fully. But also in the day, you find that kids will rush. You know, they've got their best programme on, they're playing there with their toys and they're in and out. And you're like, that was quick, <laughs> you know, two second wee. So a lot of them don't empty their bladders enough in the day. So be a little bit mindful if you're having big bed wetting that they're probably not fully emptying their bladder in the day as well. So... Um, definitely the liquids and fruit. There's so much liquid in fruit. Mm. Fizzy drinks are a no as well, and caffeine drinks, because it will make you wet the bed. Uh, and is um, should you wait for pull-ups to be dry before you take them away? Or should you should that be a, a thing that you, you try and, um, you know, just move on to, like, the, uh, the sheet-type things um, so that they know that you're moving on to the next step? Yeah. Like, what, what are, uh, there's obviously... Are there different signs within that? Should you wait for dry pull-ups before you even start yeah. you know, taking so, them away? So I think so. So de be definitely, so like, they're potty trained in the day for at least three or four months, OK? And they some children, and it's n not because there's anything wrong with them, so don't panic, but some children are five, six, even seven before. They can still have accidents, OK? So it's normal. Um, obviously, if they're having loads and loads and loads, then look at what you're feeding them in the day. But what I would say is that, yes, yeah, start the process of, right, OK, they're going to bed at 7 o'clock, at 5 o'clock. I'm not saying don't give them anything to drink so they're, like, dehydrated, <laughs> but, you know, they don't need a big beaker like this or a massive bottle of milk because it's, it's not going to happen. So start in your mind thinking, right, OK, from Monday, I'm going to start reducing some fruit and liquids and be mindful of not rushing them and then see how it goes with that pull-up on and if it's getting drier, which it normally does. Yeah. But if it's saturated, then they're not ready. Mm -hmm. They're not ready for it. Some children do sleep really deeply um, and that can be a little bit of a problem for parents. So you do sometimes, you know, have to think, right, OK, it's going to take a little bit longer when they sleep deeply. But when you are, when you do decide to do it, make sure you're set up, because if they do have that accident, have your sheet ready at the end yeah. of the bed, have their pyjamas ready, because otherwise, you know, no-one likes being woken up in the middle of the night, even parents, so <laughs> you've got to go in, change your sheets, they've wet their thing, they're all upset, and you can't find the sheets or the pyjama bottom, so... Have a little little thing at the end of the bed so you're ready in case it does happen. And yeah. a, a definitely a little nightlight as well because a lot of bedwetting, we just did a survey, and some of it's because they're scared of the dark. 
Oh. Yeah, so you've got to have a like, little nightlight for them and, you know, even have a potty in the room so they can go straight to it. But a lot of children are scared of the dark, so um, and a lot of parents say, you know, we've put a light in and it's working. So get a nice little soft light for them as well. Or even if you've got a hallway, leave the little light on out there so they can come to mummy and daddy and ask to go to the toilet. There's even those little, if you don't want a light, there's those little um, plug-in Plum. little things. Yeah, which I still have those. Yeah, like a tiny little glow that just leads their yeah, way. Yeah, it's just a little glow. I mean, don't you know, you don't need some big ring light or anything for them, but just a little tiny <laughs> floodlights. Light. The floodlights the are flood on. Floodlights, yeah. <laughs> don't wet the bed because we've got all the lights on. So, no, you don't... Just, yeah, those little glow plug-ins, yeah. they're really good. That's just enough for you to yeah. see, isn't it? Yeah. They're really good. Um, what else? Uh, oh, one person has said, my little one does wheeze in the toilet, but never his number twos. I've had to throw away so many pants. Uh, is pooing harder to conquer for some? 100%. It is why my biggest question that I get asked. So, really? And, and it, yeah, and it's funny, because I went to someone's house to do some potty training earlier this year, and I was potty training this boy who was so cute, who was so switched on. And I said, why don't you want to poo in the potty? He said, because it stinks, I don't like it. And I don't want it to be brown. I said, well, I'm never going to be... I mean, I know I can perform miracles, but that's one I can't change. So, And he just said, I just don't like it and it hurts when it comes out. So it's quite mm. funny because what happens is children go through different phases when they're growing up and they go fussy eating, eating, or there's one minute they eat everything, then they don't, and they get a little bit more harder poos. Um, and a lot of... Um, children might have that constipation poo, uh, the one hard poo, and it will put them off pooing. Right. And another little girl said to me, it's funny because I love getting into their little head. She said, it, it's because it feels like something very heavy is coming out and I don't want it to come out. Oh. And I said, but, you know, and I said, but it's all your food that goes in your tummy and it's got to come out and what's your favourite food? So talk to them, talk to them. You know, I'm a great believer, always have been with my kids. Talk to them openly about it. And I said, well, you know, you like your Marmite sandwiches and you like this and if you, you can't have any more unless you do a poo because you're going to be like that. And we... and." It, you just got to sit down and come down to their level um, with it. But pooing is very difficult for children to get. So set up a poo reward system with the poo emojis on the front and the poo fairies left it. But when they do poo in their pants, don't just chuck them away. Go and empty it into the toilet with them. Show mm. them, again, the visuals. Show them where it's got to go. Wave bye-bye to poo and then they get a prize. So... It is harder, but again, blowing bubbles, get them to relax, sit on that toilet a little bit longer because that will really relax their bowels. But it is a tricky one to get right. But set up, just focus on a poo reward system to make them feel good about it. And like I said earlier, don't point out if it's big, stinky or whatever because that will make them regress even more with poos. Yeah. And a lot of parents do do that. Oh, God, that's we've all done it haven't we, when we change nappies. Oh, that's stinky or... That's fine when they're babies, but when they're older, they take that literally like something stinky's coming out of their bum and they yeah. don't like it. Yeah. And obviously if they don't, if, if they are holding it in, that's going to lead to constipation and then it's going to get even worse. It leads to constipation. It leads to a child becoming a little bit naughty because they're, they're uncomfortable. Yeah. It leads them to losing their appetite as well. So the biggest thing you can do is give, make sure they're having plenty of liquids is another thing when that you're potty training. I really want to emphasize on that because a lot of parents say, oh, yeah, we've stopped them drinks in the day so they don't have an accident, so they don't wet themselves. And I'm like, oh, you're just dehydrating you do, your child. <laughs> you're dehydrating your child and then they're not going to poo because it's going to be so hard and they're not going to get it out. So, no, lots of fluids. But... The poo thing is more tricky, but you need to have patience with it. And definitely, let's, let's make it fun, you know? Let's make it fun, and then they do get it in the end. It is something that does sort itself out, but it can take longer. Mm. Um, one person has said, my little one uses the potty at, uh, at nursery, but not at home. I've got no idea why. That is because, because I've worked, been to visit many nurseries, and that is because they do them on regular intervals. They go with their little friends. Right. That's why. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to impress their little best friend at nursery, like, <laughs> I can use this. I'm so cool. Um, and for mummy and daddy, you know what it's like. They're, they're always, they're, like, it's like behaviour, isn't it? They're always really good for someone else and come home and they, they play up for mummy and daddy. It's the same thing with that scenario. So she's using it because her friend's using it and she wants to be the big girl. So, you know, some 
sounds another really good thing while I'm on this as well. It's really good if you've got mates that aren't like criticizing you about potty training and you're about to do it, you can do it together as well. Yeah. Like a potty training buddy. It's really good. It does work. I've got lots of parents doing this at the moment. So you can do it together because they love to follow each other mm-hmm. and copy each other. Um, but in this scenario is again, set up a fun system for her at home to to encourage her to do it. Um, and make it more fun for her because at the moment she's having a bit of fun with it going with her little friend Um, but at home she can't be bothered because she's got playing she's got too much going on and it's mummy and daddy telling her so again let's make it fun you know that's all about seeing it through the toddler's eyes and that's what I believe in when Mm. you do this yeah um do you have any best words to use for potty training are there any no like words that are just like no no I guess like stinky yeah, stinky. And I really hate it when it's funny because I was in a supermarket the other day and the little child wanted to wee and she goes, do you want to go and do, do a tinkle winkle? Do you want to do a tinkle winkle? <laughs> and the kid was looking at her thinking, what the hell is a tinkle winkle? And because uh, it was crossing his legs, and I really wanted to say, just use wee. Can you just use wee? I have to stop myself, like, because it's, like, ridiculous. I get barred from all the supermarkets. But... You know, and, and the, you could see that the kid was, like, looking, thinking, tinkle, winkle, tinkle, winkle, that doesn't really relate to anything. So just use we and poo. Firstly, that is what it is. And secondly, they're very short words that our kids can say. Yeah. So we need them to be able to say it. So, yeah, that 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 really does bug me. And I know it's up to you if you want to do it. Like, I never judge any parents, but we and poo, they recognise those words very quickly and they can say them because they're very short. So... Don't make up Sprinkleton, you know, Tinkleton, whatever. <laughs> Just do wee and poo. We're fine with that. <laughs> well, I, I like, is there another part of it taking away the aspect of getting things wrong or being bad, you know, if they if they have accidents? I, I, I guess the wording of an act, like if they have an accident, how is that worded so that that doesn't kind of play on their mind and become like fester into something massive? Yeah, because it is hard and, you know... I'm not going to lie, when I did it the first time, I was like, oh, for God's sake, you know, you Mm. knew you wanted a wee, you you know, and I'm no perfect person and, you know, you shouldn't be a perfect parent. Um, And I think... I think you've, it's really important, it's the language you use with them. So it's like, oh, never mind, you know, next yeah. time let's try and get it in the potty. Did, do you think that should have gone in the potty? It's your tone which is important. Never tell them off, never tell them off, because it's hard not to... So if you feel you're going to tell them off, just go outside and scream or something or go and get a large gin, but don't <laughs> tell them off, OK? So try not to just say, OK, never mind, let's just... Let's get you to change your pants. Get them involved as well. Let's pull your pants down, your wet pants, and let's get your big pants back on. Get them involved. That's important because mm. they soon get sick of doing that. Um, but it, it is the language and, and your expression. So don't go angry at them. Just say, you know, never mind, you know, where do you think it should have gone? So put the ball in their court. If they've done a poo in their pants, again, take it to the toilet. Well done. Thank you for helping me. Let's wash your hands next time. Where are we going to get it? So it's a bit of one of those. You do get the odd child that will wee for a reaction as well. They will do it um, because they're playing, they're watching, they're so engrossed in what they're doing, they wee and they laugh. Now, if they laugh, don't laugh back. Mm. Just say, well, I don't think that's funny. I think that's actually silly that you've done that. So you can use words like happy, sad, silly, but like not naughty, no, you shouldn't have done it. So there's ways of using the words. So choose your words wisely when you do think okay they've had an accident but never tell them off I mean I I've saw something online the other day where they put them on a naughty step because they wet themselves I mean well they're always going to relate that to something really bad and at the end of the day even sometimes they can be little monkeys they just want to please mummy and daddy that's Mm. all they want to do um and especially during this time because it's a difficult time for them potty training really does turn their world upside down. Um, and finally, one person has said uh, they've got twins. Uh, do I do them at the same time or separately? Well, again, they've got different personalities. Uh, I've potty trained a lot of twins. They're, I tell you what, they're hard. It's hard <laughs> days when you've, got, when you've got twins climbing all over you and weeing all over you. But I would say that basically that you start together to start together and then you just see what happens. There's no Mm. set rule to twins because one will get it and the other one might not get it. But believe me, after a week of that 
the other child who is getting it, the one that's not, they start thinking, why well, I'm not having this, you know, <laughs> I'm going to follow. So they do tend to follow, not always, but just go with it at the beginning, get to, and make sure you get them individual potties as well, because, you know, when I went, I, I always take potties when I go and see people, and I said, what one do you want? And they both wanted a different potty, and they swapped it all day, they're swapping from potties, potties, but then they got really attached to their own, and they wouldn't let the other one sit on it. So, you know, there's a bit of a war going on <laughs> who's having what potty. So let them choose their own potties again, and one each, and make it an individual process with them, but start it together. And if one takes to it and the other one doesn't, don't worry, they will do it eventually. Yeah. So there's no set rules to twins. I guess, is that the 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 big overriding piece of advice of the whole thing is don't worry, they will get it. They will get it. I mean, how many children do you see going to university in nappies? I say well, this I about the parents, sleep thing as well, you know. Yeah. It's all fine. They will sleep. They will put on the toilet. <laughs> it will be fine. Yeah, they will do all of it. And listen, listen, you wait until your boys are 16, 17. <laughs> you'll be going, get up, come on, you're going to miss the bus. you got to go to the thing. You know, and like my 15-year-old, the other day, she goes, Mum, she goes, do you not know that I'm a teenager? And I said... <laughs> Well, I do. So what's that got to do with anything? She said, because we sleep. We sleep, Mum. And I said, I know, but you've got to get up. It's like 11 o'clock just because you've woken up for school. Yeah, but we've got to sleep. We've got to sleep. We're growing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, all right. I, I said, I was a teenager once. She said, clearly, you didn't want to sleep. But <laughs> it's like anything. You don't see him in it. Just chill out, OK? Yeah. Don't listen to people's opinions every child is different you parent the way you want a parent and try mm -hmm. your best that's all we can do throughout their lifetime and it's the same with potty training and you know my kids are all potty trained they're fine you know and there's some children that I know who've got younger children I get so many godchildren by the way because they just want me to potty train their kids that's why I think <laughs> that's so it's not because they like me I love it. it's not because they <laughs> like me it's like oh by the way um so you know and you know I get them texting me all the time going she just won't tell us just give up then for a little bit. She's not ready. Just chill, go with it. And, you know, you'll have a ha much happier home if you don't set your expectations too high or theirs. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. Like, just do the best you can as a parent. Like, we all try and that that's it. You know, there's no right or wrong, is there? Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda, we finish each episode with you completing three sentences. The first one is being a parent means... The world to me, actually, because I always wanted to be a parent when I was a little girl. I had so many dollies and I was always pretending to be a parent at the age of six. So being a parent, yeah, it's definitely, it means the world to me. Uh, and the next sentence, if I could tell you one thing, it would be... Don't let other people judge you. Just do your best, definitely. And finally, I'm happy when... I'm sat around the table on Sunday cooking a roast dinner with all my family. It's my oh. best day. So good. Do all your best kids, day. Are all your kids still at home or have they started? Oh, Sunday at the Jenners, because my surname's Jenner, obviously, it's the Jenner Roast. I'm very well known for my roast dinners. <laughs> yeah, they come round. And my youngest is still at home. The other two, just every Sunday, the doorbell goes, they're in. Oh, know, I love that. Um, yeah, and they still got stock. I've got more stockings for Christmas. Oh, they're still my babies. They were never, <laughs> never changes. And I, I think it's because. I don't know, I think it's because my family Maltese, you, yeah. it's very family orientated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we eat loads of food. I'm a great, I love food. Yeah. And my kids love food. We all cook. They cook since they were little. So it's, Sunday is my ultimate day. I love it. I just, it just makes me happy to see them all sat around here with me. I love it. Good. Amanda, thank you so much. It's been, it's been brilliant talking to you about a topic that should really be quite simple, but that we all fret about. Thank you so much for having me. And remember, just do your best. <laughs>